seen how it was going to be raised or any of that. It, it, that that was a that was a moving moment. There's no question about that. When you when you come in here every day, like we have and like I have since April second of two thousand and eight, and you look at those banners, uh, there's no question you want to you want to be a part of raising one of your own one of your own in the program. And uh, it felt great, and, and it felt great to be able to share it in a night like this when so many people that were here through all those days when it didn't look like we'd get a banner, and uh, they were here to help share it too. I just wish that all the former players that have, that have worked over the last five years could have been back to see it live. But, but that was really that was a really big deal. Who, uh, anybody do anything that kind of impressed you? Seems like Hollowell looked kind of well. We, you know, we're, it's a little different mindset for me because we had a two-hour practice today. And um, uh, he's, he's playing better. I mean, Jeremy's playing better. We just, there's going to be some really hard days, and, and there's going to be some good days. I mean, it, it is a young team, and, and we're playing without three guys. Noah's situation was he injured his ankles in Wednesday's practice, and we're going to take it easy. He didn't go today, and he shot a little bit today, and then he wanted to be in the, he'd have been in the dunk contest, which would have brought a new fervor to that, but as would have Troy. But, um, uh, we didn't, we didn't want to risk him right now. I don't think we will this weekend either. Troy will start next week, and Lucas still a few weeks away. We miss those guys. We miss their, their work ethic, their energy. Uh, we miss the athleticism, you know, all those things right now. And, and, and they're missing it because we're in such a learning period of time. And you're always reteaching every season. But when you have veterans, a lot of times you're, that's just what you're doing. You're reteaching. It's not like where they're learning it for the first time. And we have some of that. So. There's going to be guys that are going to stand out different ways. I think the biggest thing for us right now in the first week is to be, we, before we can get the identity, uh, we've, we've got to develop some personality. And there's a personality on the floor in the sense of the communication, in the sense of the 50-50 balls, in the sense of really showing a competitive spirit, and, and, and not just when we're fresh, and not just when it's scrimmage time, and, and all those things. And we're trying to build that, that endurance mentally uh, most more importantly than physically right now. You know, you're not going to try to push guys physically yet, but you do got to push them mentally a little bit so where they start to absorb uh, the concepts and retain it so that we can move forward over the next few weeks. But everybody on this team has had flashes in the, in the first week, and everybody on this team has had uh, segments where you, they're not going on the highlight tape, they're going on the low back. And that's just what it is, and, and we're going to have days like that. Any idea what happened with Stanford? Uh, I think it's uh, the early thought would be from in there that it's a bruise. But I mean, I, I, I say that hopefully. I say that is what was said in there. Looked like everything was intact. I hope that that's what it continues to be. But uh, they, they Dr. Alba was on it right away. So. Bruce, Bruce Knee. Bruce Knee. Yeah. Bruce Knee. So we'll, we'll see. We'll a little bit more of an update. He was in a lot of pain. I mean, it was hurt like that. So uh, hopefully everything will be good there. We don't need any more if guys miss the time they're going to play. You just talk about him, though. I mean, he, he seemed to be really attacking the best. Yeah, he did. He did the other day. We scrimmaged the other day in 25 minutes of scrimmage. Uh, he had 14 free throws. He drew like seven fouls, seven or eight fouls, actually. I mean, he uh, he did a fantastic job in, in getting to the basket. He's got to be. He's very careless with the ball at times. Um, he's got to continue to learn that you know, what we want with pushing it out, being in the pick and roll, making the simple play, uh, getting rid of the casual dribble. But he is a downhill player. He's a guy that. that, that really can drive the ball down, he'll get to the basket, he's crafty. Now we need him to defend at a really high level. Rebound it, you know, guard rebounding. I mean, you guys see it. I mean, we've led the country the last two years in three-point shooting overall. And uh, it's going to take a small miracle for that to happen. So we got to find different ways to score. We've got to shoot the ball. We'll get better shooting the ball. We spend a lot of time on it. We've got to be a great rebounding team. Not a good, not an above average, but a great rebounding team. And if we're going to keep our energy game and speed game and all those kind of things going the right way. And so we've got a guard rebounds are going to be huge. I think it's going to be one of the great uh, deciders in, the, in what the minutes look like as we go down the line. And even for a guy like Yogi, inevitably the defensive work. So those are things that are going to be really important. And that's some area that Stan's got to continue. Does this, team does this team remind you of, in terms of its development, of any previous IU teams that you've had no, at the same no, state? No, not at all. It's way too young. I mean, I, I think when you think about this, you got six freshmen and we got a couple walk-ons. So there's eight. Really, Jeremy and Peter and 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 and, and Hunter are like freshmen. I mean, Peter is because he hasn't played, and uh, that's not good. 
<laughs> That's the worst turnover of the night right there. That's not coming back. Uh, but Jeremy played some. Obviously, Hunter didn't play a lot. So it's really like having a, a brand new team, you know, with the exception of Yogi and with the exception of Will. And so, no, I don't have anything to liken it to. It's a talented group. I mean, I don't, there's no question if there's talent. I mean, the three guys sitting out the night are very talented. It's just going to take time for all that to mesh. It's going to take time for them to understand the spacing. You know, we're, we're, our spacing is something we spend a lot of time on offense. We play hardly in any place. And uh, it's not about that this time of year. It's really about getting the concepts down, the spacing. But uh, They've been well coached, but everything really here right now is new. And, and they're trying to just keep their head above water with the work ethic and the energy level that's required. And we're not even practicing that well. It might seem like it is to them, but it's not. It, it's more about getting that mental endurance to be, like I said, to be able to to get through things, then the physical endurance will come from that. Tom, what are you seeing from uh, from Peter? I mean, he, he seemed uh, pretty mobile, pretty pretty effective tonight. Uh, you saw one of his better nights. <laughs> so with the, with, the, with the points, made a post move. I'm not. I hadn't seen that. But he's our stretch five, man. You've heard of the stretch four. I'm not joking. It's what he is. He can make shots. And uh, we thought about putting him in the three-point contest. But, but uh, he's got to be, he's got a space force. He, he, he's still not 100% healthy at all. We're going to lose him here for a little bit when he goes home to see his dad, uh, which is incredibly important because he's probably not going to see him again. And uh, that's really important. So just trying to get everything squared away so that his paperwork is good going in and coming back. But um, he's got to make shots. He's got to be able to block some shots. Played within himself tonight. I thought that was good. You know, he still plays too high. He, you, 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 you want to play big, but you never want to play as big as you are when you're, when you're driving the ball, when you're setting screens, when you're carving out space, you got to get low, you got to get your shoulders low. He's struggling right now getting his hips down and his shoulders as low as they have to be. So that's an ongoing thing for him, but it's an ongoing thing for all of them right now, to learn how low they have to play. Was that your idea to have Mr. and Mrs. Zeller here? Or? No, it was their idea to come. It was my idea to have me the judges. <laughs> and uh, now that was a cool moment when they got the standing ovation. That was a cool moment. And uh, I didn't even ask him personally because you didn't want to run the risk of Mrs. Zeller saying, no, I don't want to do that. You know, you, you get him to come out like that. And I just thought it made sense. But this was their this was their uh, choice to come. So I thought that was fantastic. And I don't think there's any question Cody and Victor would have been here if they weren't in the situations they're in with their, with their teams. So Cody's been tweeting about it all week. So, uh, but I thought that was awesome. And I think the fans to respond like that to them is, you know, puts just shows what kind of legacy Cody's going to carry here in Indiana. With as young as this team is, how important is it that they started earlier than, than basically you normally would? Oh, I think that's very important. I, I, I think it's going to be a balancing act. I mean, we've been, uh, beginning of the week, we went Friday and Saturday, took Sunday off. We went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, took Thursday off. Came back today, we'll go through the weekend. We'll take Monday or Tuesday off. We'll just keep building it up. And um, I think that's really important. We're going to go really hard when we're in here, and we're going to make sure that there's still enough teaching time, so they got to go mentally hard. But we're, we're not going to overdo it physically, and we're not going to overdo it lengthwise when it comes because it will be a long season and uh, I've coached a new team obviously and coached a young team the 2008-09 team that had a ton of walk-ons and guys that first got here. This is different because it's 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 a different level of talent here but it's still the same thing. They're extremely young guys that are getting ready to go through uh, a season unlike anything they've ever experienced because of the length and the, and the intensity. Did Hunter also seem a little more comfortable He's had a good week. He, he has. He's been he's been growing in there. He's a guy that and there's a guy we've really pushed physically because he needs to. As is Jeremy. Those guys need to play through fatigue if they're going to play the kind of minutes that we'd like to see them play. Optimally, I think this becomes a deep team that can do more defensively and, and, and use their length. We had a situation the other day. I was saying this the other night uh, at the speech at the auditorium. So I don't want to be repetitive. But Noah, Peter, and Hunter were three of the four guys in the show. That's 26 inches of wingspan, okay, of, of extra wingspan. And and they all had their hands down. You know, when, when we figure out how to play with our arms up, our hands up, get the flexions, move our feet, be active, cover ground, you know, then we're going to be much, much better. That's going to take time. So Connor's the epitome of that. Get in great physical shape, be able to endure it, be able to play long stretches, and then slow down. You know, slow down. And, and uh, he's playing better in space. And he's playing better when there's not a lot of traffic around. He still doesn't do a great job in traffic. That's going to take a while. 
uh, his footwork is tremendously improved. Uh, he really wants to grow into being a, a guy. We're trying to get him to be that, just that absolute pit bull that we recruited. And, and with that, I think for him to get that, he's going to have to have great confidence. And, and that's going to grow. That's going to take time. He's going to have to do it again. And there's three levels of, of, of how you grow. You, you, you've got to absorb it. You've got to be able to retain what you absorb. And then whatever you retain, you've got to be able to apply in the games. And you really not you haven't applied it until you've applied it under pressure. Until you've applied it, you know, when it's when it's crazy and chaos and loud and hot and it's just then you've got to go out there and you've got to be able to do it. And I think the bottom line with this team, if I had to sum it up, all the way across the board, we've got a lot of old habits to break and a lot of new habits to build. And I have no idea what the timeline is going to be on that. But it is what it is and we've just got to work towards it and uh, not deviate from what's important, not let these guys slip up and, and correct the bad habits when they're there or the habits that they haven't formed yet for what it takes at this level. And coach like crazy. Time for one more. Coach, I know Wednesday night you talked about defensive communication being a bit of a crisis at the moment. Have you seen any improvement in the past couple of days? On yeah, that? not in this, but I didn't think we would in this. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it, it's an ongoing thing. That's, it's not, it's, it's, it, that hasn't been, uh, they're absorbing it because if we don't do it at the end of practice, after practice, we run for it. Because we've got to get it across. I mean, the, the hardest thing to get a team to do, and I don't know how it is in the other sports, but I know it's just become, this is where all the nonverbal communication, all the social media, all the, all, all the things come in and make it harder and harder and harder for a team to verbally communicate. And, and, it, and it's always been hard, but it just keeps getting harder and harder. So you're really fighting the human element every day when you're trying to get a team to move. And, you, and you've got to teach it, you've got to coerce it, you've got to force it, you've got to demand it. I mean, you, you name the adjective, and you've got to have that when it comes to communication, because you cannot win if you don't have that kind of communication. And what, they, what they'll learn is communication builds confidence, and when you're really talking on defense, it's like adding an extra defender. When you start to talk on defense, when you start to force the ball to a sideline, when you get it down there on the baseline, you're adding defenders. Those sideline and baselines are... They're, they're, they're built-in defenders. Communication is built-in defenders. And we've got to learn that. And that's just going to take some time for us. Thanks, sir.